You've reached the RC Groups podcast with your host, Jim T. Graham, Jason Cole. Uh, I meant to play that music, and then I just thought I'd beatbox it. <laughs> can you beatbox, Jason? Oh, my gosh. No, I cannot. And uh, that little character. Anybody can beatbox, but can you beatbox well is the is the question. All right. What am I doing right now, everyone? Hey, welcome to the RC Groups podcast. I'm your host, Jim T. Graham, with Jason Cole. I'm about to email Lane and see what the heck he's up to this week. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on, and uh, there's there's things to be talked about, of course. Um, what should I do first? First, I'm going to thank our sponsor, Hobby King at hobbyking.com. They are coming out with planes and wings and all kinds of things that rhymed. And so we're going to take a look at some recent wings they just brought out and take an in-depth look at some pictures. And uh, we have Horizon News and Horizon Contest, which is crazy. We're going to talk about that. And then Jason's getting ready to head on out to an event. And I have to go to court. We're going to talk about that too. Oh boy. <laughs> and I was thinking last time I went to court, is it last time I went to court? Well, one, one long time ago in LA, a guy, uh, it's sort of a home invasion type of situation. Luckily, uh, no one got hurt, but, uh, I had to go to court for that. So I wore an 1880s shirt and I was fully garbed out. And it, uh, it became apparent that I was going to be the funnest part of the judge's day. By the way, that he was treating me in court. So anyway, Jason is getting, we'll talk about that in a minute too. As our live viewers come in and uh, et cetera, so forth. And uh, there's another phrase I hate. But anyway, Jason Cole, what's happening with you this week in the world of RC? Oh, well, so on and so forth. You know, things are happening. But no, hey, yeah, I'm getting ready to have a great time. I'm excited. I'm getting ready to drive to one of the greatest places on earth, Mac Hodges Field. Um, should be in good shape after the storm, Mr. Michael headed on through there, but I don't think they got it too bad. Um, I think the field's looking good, but the annual pumpkin chunk DLG contest is going down. No, we're not throwing pumpkins from trebuchets, although that would be a lot of fun too. Well, how can you call it a pumpkin chunk and you ain't chucking no pumpkin? Well, we're, uh, we're chunking airplanes. I'll tell you that. So this is the annual event, but it also happens to coincide with the 2019 USA Team Selects. So a number of us, I think there's 22 pilots that have signed up for the Team Select tryouts. And what that means is after the event's over, the top three guys are going to be on Team USA heading to the Worlds in Slovenia, I think. Slovakia, Slovenia, one of those uh, European countries out there to represent the United States of America in the World F3K Championship. So there's a chance I could make it. There's a chance I won't make it. You got to be in the top three. There's a lot of great guys going to be out there, but it's going to be a whole lot of flying. So the event really kicks off tomorrow. Uh, we're going to have some pre contest contests, including an all up last down event of one meter airplane DLGs. And then after that, we'll have an all up last down of the one and a halfs. These are a lot of fun because it gets everybody on the field at the same time. And you three, two, one, everybody launches. And the first person that lands, um, assuming you don't max out at three minutes um, is out. And then you just go until you have a winner. So that's going to be fun. And then the real contest starts Saturday morning. You went last year, and uh, how did that go for you? I've been the last three years. I've got, uh, well, so where is it? I've got some trophies. I won a cool globe thing last year that you could put liquor in, and it's got a cork in the top, but it looks like a globe, and it spins on a stand. Um, but I think I won the overall pre-contest contest, contest uh, with one meter and one and a half all up, last downs kind of stuff. So it's a great time. It will be at Max Place, camping out for a few days, and – the Pumpkin Chunk event is Saturday and Sunday. It ends around 2 o'clock on Sunday. And we'll have the awards. We'll have fly-offs and the awards for the Pumpkin Chunk. And then after that, all of the team select pilots scores carry over. And we continue flying a few more rounds. And then we fly through Monday as well. So it's it's a lot of flying. There's like 39 rounds scheduled. Um, a normal contest, you might fly 10 to 15 
So this is going to be a whole lot of throwing gliders in the air. Hopefully my shoulder's up for the task. The good thing I got yeah. for me is I'm a I'm fair amount younger than a lot of the guys competing. So, you know, maybe uh, fitness will come into play a factor. We'll see. There's got to be a lifespan of shoulders and the ability to chunk. Am I incorrect on that? To be not, I'm not over. Incorrect. But, however, what makes me excited for the future in this non-competitively is there's a lot of old uh, guys that are still flying, and they're just out there still throwing them. They're not getting this high. They're not going to be as competitive. But what they do do, which is really cool, and when you do do it, you do do okay, it. Okay, I just want to say that you just <laughs> said uh, they're out there getting high, and they do do. So keep <laughs> So, uh, they do have a, they call it a gray cup and it's for the older guys. So it's kind of like a, a, a mini contest within the contest of, of the older guys scores. I don't know where they, maybe it's 60, maybe it's 50. I don't know what that, uh, age cutoff is, but I'll get there eventually and I'll be able to compete with those guys. And even though you can't throw as high as the young guys and, and stay in it, uh, you're still having fun with your buddies. You know, it's just one of the, it's really the only competitive thing I've done in the RC industry that I really enjoy. I've done like freestyle aerobatics. I've done uh, pylon racing. Uh, combat's really fun too, by the way. But but this is really one of the like formal contests that it's like, even if you do crappy, you're still having a really good time and it's just fun to be there and, and be a part of it. So it's going to be a good weekend. And then when are you coming home? Uh, I'm coming home Monday afternoon, and I will be right back because I have a delivery from FedEx I need to go sign for, and my wife's not home. So I'll be right back. Maybe it'll be something cool. Uh, yes, if you've noticed, I did get a screen for behind me. Now, um, I had a dream, and the dream was that I was going to do something weird behind me. And you know how life is. All of a sudden, it's time to go live, and I've got to brush my teeth, which I did. And uh, then I get on here and the app that used to let me do that is now not here anymore because, of course, um, Google loves to take things away. Uh, I could go on and on about Google and the, and the setup that we use here because they change it all the time. So like uh, this week when I went to turn on the Google live chat, um, the, it was totally not the same. And my go live now button was gone. And I have freaked out in the past, and, but I'm, I've learned not to freak out. I just kept clicking until something happened. I want to say hello to our live chatters. So what I'm saying is, is if I get it right next week, I can put like a triple tree behind me or something cool like that. Okay. What's that, Jason? It looks like a big screen. What's up? Well, oh no, it's nothing RC related. Um, yeah. However, it is kind of cool in my mind. I uh, was thinking about the back wall of my loft, and my wife had a great idea. She's like, "Why don't you get some movie posters?" Oh, like, what movies did you get? Idea. So we got Back to the Future. We've got Raiders of the Lost Ark and Star Wars: Return of the Jedi. Mm. Those are uh, frames to frame the posters and hang on the wall. I got something not RC related just now too. Let's see if you even know what it is. The Elgato HD60 oh, Pro. That's for recording and streaming video. That is correct, my friend. I broke down and did it. Uh, my son, I went upstairs and I had a, a meeting with Truman and his 15, 13-year-old buddy. And uh, they were giving me the pros and cons of the Elgato. It's a This is a card to, that would allow you to record. Uh, if I was on, let's say, uh, Real Flight or something like that, I could record this and have a... a a PIP, a picture in a picture of me, which is another reason I got this thing, Jason, because now just my head can be in the shot of the gaming. There you go. Yeah, I, I a lot of people do that. I've got some friends, and I don't know if you've seen kids uh, be the same way, but it's like, what do you want to be when you grow up, kids? And they're like, I want to be a YouTube personality. I want to stream well, video games on the internet. I'm like, okay, good luck with that. <laughs> you should probably have a plan B, by the way, but... <laughs> Okay. Speaking of which, uh, <laughs> hey everyone, we're about to sidetrack RC. My daughter brought over this guy that she went on a date with, and but before they went on a date, they actually came to my house and ate dinner with us. Prior to that, in a parking lot, he looked me in the eye and said, "Hello, Mr. Graham. My name is Tony," and he shook my hand. Okay. Yeah. Uh, P.S. Kids don't do that. Oh, they, that's like they, you're lucky if they even look, acknowledge you, much less look you in the eye. You, you know. Studied. 
Yeah. So uh, what's my point? Oh, we were asking him what he wanted to do uh, possibly for a career. So here's some of the things he listed. Travel to Iraq and be a photographer. Okay. Uh, yeah. And then he listed a few other dangerous countries that I know he ain't coming home from. And then his backup plan was to be a tattoo artist. <laughs> wow. It's uh, oh, we were, practice on your daughter. How cool is that? Oh, awesome. <laughs> we were eating fried chicken and I'm just looking at him thinking, uh. <laughs> oh man, the thing so, parents deal with. Let's say hello to our, our live chatter, Steve Wattenberg, Jack the Ripper. You know, I don't think I've seen that name before. Uh, Nikolai's online, Daniel Haynes, Chris Edwards, Matt RC, uh, and, and thousands more. So Welcome Jason, everybody. I was on the phone today with Kim, Kim Payne of Horizon Hobby, of which you, uh, if you don't know Kim, you probably don't. She's a behind the scenes type of person. Extraordinaire. Yeah. So if you see us doing a Horizon review, it came from Kim and you got my email about the Cherokee, Jason, correct? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. But that's not what I'm talking about. What I called was, as I said, Kim, look, I could call my good friends at Knife Edge Software or Jason Merkel at Horizon, but I would love to talk to somebody about this new Horizon Real Flight release on the uh, Hangout. Yeah. And then we, How cool yeah. is that? Well, speaking of which, I have a window. Don't know what we're talking about uh, yeah. Horizon, which you know bought Hobbyco and all the stuff, in including Real Flight. Um, they came out with a version that now has. Horizon Hobby Aircraft and safe AS3X technology, all the all the good stuff from Horizon is finally now available in Real Flight. You can get an add-on or buy the full deal if you don't already have it. So, so Jason, what I'm doing is going to rcgroups.com, the world's largest and most active RC website. In fact, I got an email from Futaba. I shouldn't talk about that yet because I haven't announced it. But I was talking to Futaba, and they were like. Send us some stats. And I thought, you know, I haven't looked at stats in a while. And uh, the numbers were astounding. And let me say something. Uh, I'm really talking off the top of my head, which is bad business. But Heli Freak, my friend, you know how helis are like uh, multi rotors came around and helis were kind of like, wow. Seems like it, right? Heli Freak is a rock kin. I'm not even joking. Like twice the size. I'm not, I don't want to name a competitive uh, website, but like twice the size of RC Universe. And it's just a heli site. Yeah. Because nobody flies I, them anymore. They just now they just talk about them. <laughs> I don't know, but <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was I was a little blown away. So uh let's go here first. There's two real flight things to talk about. PS, I did uh I didn't actually speak to Ryan Jason, but I left him a message and then he left me a message. So Ryan is the guy who heads up the team at Knife Edge that creates Real Flight, and we've been in the studios there. Oh yeah. At uh, Real Flight. So Fly Horizon Hobby Plans on a Real Flight 8. And then what I did, well, we have a video here. Should I do it that way? Let's talk about the planes. Sport Cub S, Apprentice, the E-Flight Timber, uh, Timber with Floats, nice. Carbon Z Cessna. Perfect. F yeah, and go fly the Evolution and see if, it, if you get as excited as Jason did. Mini Convergence. I would like to see the FPV option on the F-27. How do I not have a copy of this, my friend? Okay, we're we're gonna check it out. Park Zone Conscindo. I don't know that airplane, man. Do you know that airplane? It's like a aerobatic export kind of thing. What we really need are pictures, and there's more carbon cub, ultra stick, uh F15 Eagle Fusion, Fusion 480. So I'm oh, I really hope they put the new ASH um Ali's ASH cell plane in this. It would be awesome. So let's see if they have any pictures or anything. I know there's a video there. There's no photos. Let's take a look at the video real quick. Here. The number one flight sim. Real flight. Requirements are an Intel Pentium 1 gigahertz or equivalent, 512 megabytes of RAM, 10 gigabytes of hard drive disk space. <laughs> drive space disk. Oh, I thought that was real. I was like, I better stop talking. Sweet. Oh, no, yeah. So they were asking the minimum requirements. It doesn't take a crazy computer to run it, but... If you want to max out the graphics and everything, you want a really nice high-end graphics card. I'm going to turn, turn the volume down. down. You can turn it up if you want. So in the past, the deal was um, if you're flying real flight, you were stuck with Hobbico planes. 
And now I was always like, holy cow, wouldn't it be awesome if there were more airplanes than just Havico planes? And so now we do have the horizon lineup and I've got to think more and more are going to show up. Can you hear me, Jason? I can hear you. Oh, okay. So anyway, that's happening, but check this out. This is I was just I was confounded by a ch chat post. Oh. Says, hey everybody, it's Lane. Hey Lane. The chat post How you guys good doing? Good man. I like that backdrop the best. Listen, Wait, to thank this, you. listen to this live chat post that I, I just, it made me do a double take. So, you ever feel like a hundred unseen eyes are looking at you from every shadow? The night can taste me and it's hungering for more. Who posted that? <laughs> what the heck? x -Rex, I don't know. I don't know if it's a bot or just somebody having fun, but good on you. You got me. Oh, uh, <laughs> speaking of that, let's stop here for a second and talk about my court date. Speaking of a hundred eyes on you, um, so uh -oh. so I got a subpoena yesterday, and the crazy part is, is I got it from uh, a voicemail that I had to play over and over again so that I could. I'm hearing myself, Laney. Who's this? Yeah, that? me too. Sounds good on my end. Maybe it's you, no Jason. It can't be me. Maybe I it is you because you're the one with no echoes. Check, check, check. That's not how that works. There we go. Anyway, um. Now I hear myself. I'll try to, I'll talk through it. So anyway, I get this voicemail. And so not only did this crazy mofo drive his car through the yard where kids were standing and then through the next yard and then through the next yard only to be stopped by a tree. Have we seen that video on this podcast? I saw, I don't know if we've seen it on the podcast. I remember watching it. Um, mm. doing it. it was crazy. Well, I'm going to go find that video real fast. But my point is, is that now because this guy who can't control cars or is up a hot type for liquor. Now I got to go downtown to court and, and be a witness. I didn't even see the guy do it. I never saw the guy. All I saw yeah, was what the, after the heck could they want from you. All you were there for was the aftermath. Uh, I, I, at least I'm not going to court for any other reason other than uh, I have to talk about someone else's misdeed, you know, well, they let you broadcast live from the, <laughs> I'm sure they won't, but don't think I'm not wearing braids, a cowboy hat and some sort of 1880 shirt, just like I did in Los Angeles. Right. I'm going to find this video. Lane, talk to us. What's happening, my friend? Yeah. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> what? Whoa. I, my internet's freaking, I think. Oh, no, I can't believe it. Yeah, I know. Hard to believe me and my, my water-based internet uh, <laughs> with me. Yes. It's steam uh, powered uh, over there. Imagine right. that. Okay. I'm going to put laying on hold for just one second. And uh, yeah, I'm going to share this video. Okay. Y'all. So this is me uh, after this guy just crashed through the yard. Jason, if you hear this, nod your head. Of my house and i don't know the whole story but my daughter says have you seen the mailbox and i said well actually i can't see the mailbox that's because a car hit it took the top off of it and killed my concrete chicken concrete chicken that car must have been going 100 miles an hour because it careened through here it didn't go off into the bar ditch which would have been spectacular but it did come up here and hit this rock rip out the under part of the car Jumped out over here. There's John Law. There's a reason why that cop's running around. And then we have no idea where this tree came from unless it took out a whole tree. Went through here. Then you see all the debris. And then it went through this yard. Then it hit this tree. Then the guy got up and ran. And then they caught him. And here we are. So Jason, Jeez, so check this out. So uh, all that happened. And then last night when I got this call, they gave the guy's name. So I got on the internet and Googled it. And uh, there was a blow by blow report in uh, this newspaper, this local paper. And I guarantee whoever wrote that article just wrote down what I said. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, yeah, so you should get writing credits on that. I know I got to go to court. And I'm going to say, if they're like Mr. Round, blah, 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 I'm going to tell them there were kids where he, he almost was minutes before 
And then I'm going to say that his uh, inability to control himself has resulted in me having to go downtown, which I never damn do. I said, how is this guy affecting me so much? And yeah. I'm just sitting in my house. Yeah. I love uh, do you have the remnants of your chicken? Yeah. I put it. I just take it with. <laughs> Carry it with me. <laughs> he killed my pet chicken. He killed my pet chicken. This is handmade. This is art. <laughs> okay, okay. Enough of my law problems. Let's talk about this right here because it's awesome. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hello. Is that is that <laughs> we stop that and try that again? Awesome. What are you doing? You got Jason B boxing over there. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> hey, yeah, you said you couldn't beatbox, my friend, but you can. Okay, so I bet when... together the three of us can do something pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> so you can win a real flight with real flight eight so if you purchase real flight eight you're automatically entered for a chance to win a grand prize ride with scott scooter yoke in the quicksilver p51 mustang right there how awesome is that you got to fly in a P51. that's a heck of a opportunity right there and you not only get to fly in this hold on let me get off there you get to do it at uh Oh, what's that giant thing we went to, Jason? Uh, it would be called the Oshkosh. I was going to call it Ox Oshkosh. Oshkosh. So you you would be at Oshkosh. So what's it say? Uh, you could win the blah 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 in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Every aspect. Blah, blah. I'm just curious what happens if you can't go, can't make it you to can, Oshkosh. You get a thousand dollars. Choose a thousand dollars in a Horizon Hobby shopping spree. Nick Nick just said if anybody doesn't go to Oshkosh and they take that shopping spree, he's going to cry. It is a pretty awesome opportunity. Yeah. Did you know it costs like $500 a minute to fly in one of those? I just, maybe I'm just getting that off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure that's right. It's probably not cheap. There used to be one that flew around here, around the RC park, and mm -hmm. uh, I would occasionally see that guy, like in full-on knife edge, ripping and tearing. This is my favorite picture of somebody in the Oculus Rift, by the way north of there in Lexington, Kentucky. What? <laughs> <laughs> Let me try something. <laughs> I think Lane is on a phone call somewhere. I don't know what the hell's going on. <laughs> All right. You know what? I'm going to throw it straight to you, Lane. How about you know, that? Yeah, yeah. What's been going down, Lane? Okay. Uh, so now I'm standing in front of a car. Imagine that in my shop. Uh, there's a P-51 Mustang in Lexington, Lexington, Kentucky, just, I don't know, what is that, 60, 70 miles north of you, 100 miles? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I got to fly in that one. Awesome. And what was that like? Uh, it was probably the coolest thing I've ever got to fly in. I flew with, uh, was it Steve Johnson there out of uh, Nashville uh -huh. in, in his MX-2? That was pretty cool. But I think the, the Mustang definitely beat that. The, what I remember the most about the flight was – you know, it's a big four blade prop and that huge engine up there and the noise and the sound and the feeling of it. And you taxi out onto the runway. And when he hit full throttle, uh, I just remember the feeling of you can literally feel each blade just just like a tractor pulling you. It's just freaking amazing power. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was pretty awesome uh, that uh, it's hurry home. Honey is the name of the airplane uh, out of Lexington. So you ever get up there, talk to the guy that owns the FBO. It's pretty cool. The closest I can get is I flew in the Yak 54 with Jim Burke. I think it was the last time that plane ever flew. And and it was like a muscle car, man. It was just pure fury. Yeah. Mm, I used to fly powered paragliders. <laughs> it was like it was right <laughs> on your back. Like right? thing, man. I, I fly helicopters for a living. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> so um, I think behind you, that is a Challenger? Uh, this one is a Charger. Oh. Uh, uh, 72. This one belongs to my 16 year old. The challenger is eh, knocking <laughs> stuff over. Uh, there is that. No. Yeah. Can you see it past there? Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's the challenger. That's a 70. Then you just get a new truck too. I did. Uh, it's awesome. Would you like to see it? Yeah. If, if my internet holds up, I'll walk to the window. I like the meme that you posted. Oh yeah. You don't need a new truck. Uh, can we see it? Yeah. 
Wait, I haven't seen that one. Is that a pickup? Uh, Christy says, open the garage door. <laughs> Christy, <laughs> hello. Yeah. She, so maybe she's smarter than me. Is Chris, Christy the first lady of RC? Has that been determined? Uh, I don't know. Oh, you got a yeah. step side because step sides are always cooler. Right. But if it's a Dodge, they call it a util a, a utiline. U mm. Yeah. That's not sexy at all. That name. Uh, yeah. So that is a 1972 Dodge Power Wagon. It's a a, a half ton, four wheel drive, four speed, 318, long bed utiline or step side. Are you going to uh, slam it? Negative. It's got 67,000 miles on it, is all. Wow. Mm. I think you and, should slam uh, it. <laughs> I slam the door every now and then. <laughs> Put some air shot, air, airbags on there all the way to the ground. <laughs> okay. So now, once you get off of the crack pipe, <laughs> so now I'm sitting on a golf cart. So, oh, and my son, did you see his new motorcycle? I, I show it to us. My my 17 year old bought a motorcycle, and hi, Christy. And not yet. <laughs> we'll get there. There. Uh, that's pretty awesome. Wow. What is that for the people listening to the audio podcast? That is a 2003 Vegas. Uh, who makes who makes it Vegas? Victory. Oh, victory. Okay. Which would be an American motorcycle. <laughs> so say hi, Christy. Is that like the Taurus of handguns or is it a, a good brand? Say hi, Christy. Hi, Christy. Hi, hey, Christy. Are you working? Is she working hard over there? She is. She's actually putting together the hardware packs for the Balsa Kudas right now. So she stays awfully busy. Can you make a like a whip sound right now? Whoosh. Whoosh. That's right. Get to work. <laughs> but as you can see, it's kind of a disaster in here. There are cars <laughs> upon cars upon cars and golf carts. So love it. Anyway, yep. So uh, this week we are prepping for Flight Fest Texas. Uh, starts on November 1st down in Rockdale. We're heading down there. We're going to get down there a few days early. Uh, so I'm in the process. In fact, this computer is sitting on top of Norman kits right now. Uh, I'm building some pre-building them. They sell better that way. And uh, pre-building a few CUDA kits. And I've pre-built some Balsa CUDAs and covered. So I have mm -hmm. them on Lane's Plains Facebook page, actually. If somebody wants them before we go to Flight Fest, I'll ship it to them. I don't care. So that's what I've been doing that and working up there in South Dakota. Uh, haven't got to fly anything for a while. But I did just see uh, a friend of mine, Danny McDonough. I don't know how to pronounce his name. He got some of those high-tech FPV quads, uh, and he's going to be doing a giveaway thing with them. It's kind of cool. So, mm. but, Very cool, man. Yeah, that's about all I got going on. Just lots of work, 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 work. Uh, these cars don't fix themselves, and the slave driver <laughs> over there, she, she keeps me busy with everything else. Uh, my son made it to state in cross country a week ago. When's he going to run back? He runs tomorrow. No, uh, tomorrow that was tomorrow. a joke. Yeah. He tomorrow is, tomorrow is state though. Wow. So that's the biggest of the big. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's made, he's a junior. He's made state all three years. You know, uh, in my day, I was the fastest, uh, 220, uh, hundred yard dash man in the County. No kidding. Yep. I still hold a record. Huh. What was your time? I don't remember, but I do know they changed to metric the year later, and that's why that record will never be broken. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> the 220 and the 440? Yeah. Uh, my dad confused my son last night. He says, well, I was pretty dang good at the 440 when I was in high school, and Cameron goes, what's a 440? Besides, <laughs> right. an, besides an engine. <laughs> yes. I want to go on a game. First of all, congratulations to your son. That's awesome. I believe, I've told my daughter this, it didn't make her do anything, but I said that I thought that me winning all those races and track had everything to do with the rest of my life because you could feel what it felt like to actually be the best, you know, at something and then go to that next track meet and everybody's looking at you. Like you're the guy that that's going to beat them. If there's something about that, Jason, you were a pitcher. Did you get that five when you were out there kicking all the ass on the mound? Yeah. I mean, you know, I don't know. I was kind of in my own world. Ah, cause you're so a pitcher. You know how many pitchers it takes to screw in a light bulb? Oh my gosh. How many? One. They hold the light bulb and they let the world revolve around them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought that was helicopter pilots. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, 
I fully agree that sports athletics in high school, junior high, and even before then uh, is huge. Uh, and if, if you don't allow, or even in some cases, make your kids at least try sports that you're, you're doing them a disservice because it does build that competitiveness and that will to succeed and, and to be better. And, and I like that. Um, so I made my kids do it. And then most of them of the three, uh, two of my guests kind of continued on. The youngest is definitely the more sports oriented out of all three of them. And the thing about track is no one's trying to hit you. Right. <laughs> so that's good. Well, he was in wrestling and uh, he liked that. And, uh, but now he, then he went to shoot trap and uh, he's pretty good at trap shooting and he's good at running. And I mean, the kid's good at anything he tries. So I worked at a skeet range in high school. Um, but I also lived on 30 acres. I'm swinging it back around to RC and I always wanted an RC plane, but back then in the eighties, you know, they, I just never could get past the cost or yeah. how I would even do it. And so you fast forward to today and you literally a newbie could drive over and get themselves a horizon RTF by, you know, just out of the box and, and be successful. I've seen right. it. Absolutely. Uh, I was the same way. I used to see tower tower talk. Uh, magazine, you know, it'd come in the mail and just, I'd circle stuff be like, Oh, I want this. I want this. I want this. And you know, an airplane was 110 bucks or something, you know, for a, whether it was a kit or an IRF or something, but what didn't register to me was that it's another four or $500 worth of other equipment necessary transmitters and all that. Right. Yeah. Right. And I never bought any of it because, well, I was spending all my money on cars just kind of like I do now. Before the advent of, uh, you know, the iPad and things like that, they had this thing called magazines and uh, <laughs> read the Hobby Lobby catalog. Like, I'm not going to say where I read it or uh, uh, how many times a day I would read it, but let's just say a certain time of day, I would read the Hobby Lobby catalog <laughs> and I literally had it memorized. I'd be like, I really want this. I sort of want that. That's interesting. And then I would fit, I would just go over it and over it. And then Jason, I got called the Hobby Lobby. And uh, to be their marketing guy. And thankfully, I'd already memorized the whole damn thing. <laughs> yeah, you guys were like at Hobby. How long were you guys at Hobby Lobby? I wasn't there that long, actually. I was there about two, three years, I guess. And then, yeah. Jason, you were there a lot longer than that. Another 10, yeah. 10 Cause long cause, years. Because that's where I met Jason at, I think. Maybe out at Seth is where we actually really met. But And Jim, I think I met you there at, uh, well, no, at Seth. And then, Ran any a few times at Hobby Lobby, if I remember right. But who was it? Was it Larry? Was that the guy's name? Crazy wow. Larry, I think. Crazy okay, Larry. That, yeah, that's after me. Yeah, where uh, he used to have his, what they call it, a, a garage sale or something. Yeah. You know, yeah, uh, I always think that people know all of the Hobby Lobby, but people have certain time frames that they lived in the Hobby Lobby world. The thing we did was uh, the Thanksgiving that always sticks out in my mind is the Thanksgiving sale. And it would start like in the wee hours of Thanksgiving day and go all the way to the end. And we, one year I remember the uh, VP wasn't there, Jason and Randy was in charge of the sale. Uh huh. You may or may not know who Randy is, but um, I don't even know wh what to say to, to give you a picture of Randy uh, that I would be able to say on the internet. But um, Randy, Jason was just selling everything. And when the owner, when Mr. Martin came in and saw what he had sold for the prices, he was livid. And he's like, I thought we was having a sale. I, I mean, that's what's in the name sale. <laughs> he's like, you're not supposed to give it away. I used to love that sale every year. And it just kind of went downhill after a few years. So, yes, I agree but. with Chris Edwards when he's talking about what we want for Christmas. Um, I, I'm not really there yet. I'm just now finishing the porch. I'm all stuck in the porch, but I would love for the uh, government to leave us alone. I've never in my life thought that the government would be jacking around with not only my hobby, but now the thing that I do for a living and they're all up in it. And it's, I'm going to say it right now, Jason, it's just about money. So yeah. like this thing where they shot a quad into a wing at 248 faster than the airplane can actually travel. Uh, or faster than most airplanes would land or be at that altitude anyway. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say they could they travel, you know, 500 plus mile an hour, but uh, not when they're coming in the land. <laughs> this story right. is sponsored by Amazon and Google. We want your airspace. That's all it is. Yeah. It's a PR yeah. thing to uh, take away our airspace. That's it. 
and I won't acknowledge it. They, I, I'm not like gonna. You just, you just did. Well, I did on this on this little. I'm, I'd never write a story about it. I'm never gonna shine a light on those guys because they don't deserve it. We're gonna do our hobby and fly our planes and uh, see what I mean. Uh, they did that one thing where we had to register. Then that was taken away, and and it wasn't. Uh, and so why should I listen to anything? Yeah. I'm gone straight rebel on the podcast. Oh, that's okay. I, I agree with you. It's a it's a mess, and hopefully they'll get it figured out. You know, with the AMA up there fighting as much as they can, but they're we're small potatoes compared to the FAA. Well, not that we're small potatoes compared to the huge amount of money that's being put into the pockets of the people that vote uh, from companies like Google and Amazon. They obviously don't know how much money I put into my last ARF. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> or my last kit for that matter. Jeez. And I will say I'm, I'm hopefully not talking out of turn here, but I was a little bit behind the scenes on what was happening while we were fighting that, uh, while it, before it was voted on. And I can say there was a lot more being done than said, because you have to be careful. Uh, if you're someone like the AMA about what you say publicly and how it's going to affect you on the backside of your dealings in Washington. And so that's why you don't hear everything that's going on because it's not a great, it's like being in war and telling your enemy exactly what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I did hear this. Yeah. I heard this yesterday. It was an interview and the, and the AMA guys were talking about um, the new laws and all that. And they said that when they were in Washington, that uh, senators were coming up to them and saying, please, we hear the message from your people. Please make them stop calling us. <laughs> That's good. And so uh, I know it was from their people, but we also sent out around 500,000 emails and uh, telling everyone, uh, call them, uh, click on this link and do all that. So it was AMA, but it was also RC groups, flying giants, heli freak people that were doing all that as well. So it's, it's good to know at least that we, we were heard, even if it didn't change the outcome. Yeah. yeah. Fell on deaf ears. Yeah. But, oh, well. Well, what have you been working on, Jim? Anything cool? Um, I'm going to be real honest with you. I've been uh, working on some things coming up and like uh, Black Friday and Cyber Monday and, and some concepts like that. But I've been working uh, in the evenings out on the porch and I got my I got my fire pit in and everything's painted and everything's done. I'm ready for Halloween. So I've been doing that. As far as flying, I have to say I have not physically been working on anything. But let's look at a story I wrote not too long ago. Boing, jing, what a, what a, what a, what a, oh, you can't see me. Okay. Yeah, you beat me to it. All right. I did, Jason Cole. <laughs> I did that story at night. I know you did. I was like, ah, oh, you got it. <laughs> it's, ah, I'm glad oh, you noticed, man. I, it. I said, I thought I'm working late at night. Wait till he wakes up in the morning and <laughs> it sees the story's already live. Jason always beats me on these. So this is the sky shadow. You know, I was thinking, what does this remind me of? It reminds me of the wing that Matt gave me. What is it, Jason? Uh, the Optera? No. Uh, it was a horizon wing that was joint. The Manta. This reminds me of the Manta. So let's take a look. So like, this is what really reminded me of it is this nose piece. This is exactly how the Manta operates. And there's the bottom. And there's the top. Great coloring, of course. Uh, laying your all your stuff should only be those colors. Okay, I'll work on that. <laughs> what, did you see, did you see the kudas that I just posted uh, that I, I built? I have not have been hard at work. And RC groups, the world's largest, the most. No, I have not seen those. <laughs> well, they're on my. Actually, they're on the Apache Pass Facebook page and on the Lanes Plains Facebook page. I think that's about it. Uh, I wanted to show the little brother to this. This is the the swallow, which might be even more interesting to me than the big boy because I don't want to stick a, a GoPro in the nose of a plane. So uh, I bet this thing is not expensive. Let's look at the video, shall we? Let me get some audio for you. It really doesn't look bad at all for a cruiser sport sport flyer. So you got a OSD uh, battery number on there. I like the size too. Be a good little racing racing plane. You said it's indestructible. So it's the same material. I don't know about racing. It's pretty draggy looking. I don't know how fast are they going now. 
pretty pretty quick and yeah super maneuverable i mean well over 100 mile an hour sure and solid but this is this is probably more sport flying and enjoying it you know proximity <laughs> flying through gaps and stuff it has a flight stabilizer on it I, it might be the first time i've seen that on a hobby king plane what do you think mm -hmm. maybe all right. I keep trying to figure out why I keep sliding to the left, and I just realized half my chair is down towards my drain and my floor. <laughs> <laughs> so if I get if I get flushed, <laughs> <laughs> what else do we have? Um, yes, yes, yes. Okay, I want to talk about a couple of things here. First is this: the 30th annual Arizona Jet Rally. Be rough or bruff or uh, I'm not sure how to say his name, but uh, this is going on. And so what's happening is if you go to the top of rcgroups.com and you go to our special events, you'll see the Arizona Jet Rally. This is the first time I think I've done this. And so uh, they will be reporting from the show and to this forum section. And you can see photos coming out of there. So pretty excited about that. And in the same vein, I'm going to go to flyinggiants.com and I'm going to go to the top of the forums there. And now we have the Tucson Aerobatic Shootout section. Let's see if there's anything new today. Holy smokies. Okay. So Sukhoi Kid uh, pinged me and he said, hey, and I was, that's all he had to say was, hey, I knew what he wanted, when he wanted it, and how to do it, and I did it. <laughs> and uh, I'm not even joking. And so what I'm going to do is go cherry pick some stuff here. I'm thinking and talking, and if I say it out loud, that means I have to do it. I'm going to turn some of these into feature articles as soon as we hang up. And then I'm probably, Jason, going to go over to RC Groups and create a TAS uh, section over there. And then that would involve mm. me moving things manually, but I might move everything over there, too. Maybe I'll Keep do that. Tassie. Also. And what? Keep it tassy. Tassy. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, and then I, I'll show you my the feature that I did for Sukhoi. And by the way, anyone listening out there, live or whatever, if you have an event and you want to be in a special event section on the top of the site, all I require is that you send us photos and updates. I did ask for a, a little longer of an update than this, but he is running the show. I understand. And uh, photos and things like that. So if you want to get listed and everyone see it and be in mass emails that goes out to about 130,000 people, then uh, all you have to do is shoot me a PM and I will make that happen for you. All right. I'm going to turn this off because I think you can't look at the website forever. So Probably Jason... Can. <laughs> it's true. Yes. <laughs> Jason, you're rolling out uh, as soon as the podcast is over? Uh, pretty much. Yeah, I still have to load up. So it, it might be four or five o'clock, but 4.30 maybe. And then we talk about what you're bringing with you on airplane or what uh, cell planes? Well, I'm still flying the, uh, the Vladimir model snipes. And then I have a Go Mini for my one meter uh, just for fun. Um, so yeah, so snipes and that, I mean, there's some newer planes out there that a lot of the guys were flying and moving to that, that seem to be, you know, sort of outperforming me in launches. So, mm -hmm. so, you know, when everybody's getting nice shiny airplanes, it's not all on a new airplane, but it certainly doesn't hurt to have the best of the best. Jason, I just had an idea. You know those shoes that people wear? They're like big carbon fiber springs, and they hop around. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe a pair of those would really get your launch really up there. Think about it. If you could, like, jump, get about 10 feet in the air, and what? spin and throw it. You know, they have they don't have rules against doing it. This is true. Not that uh, yeah. I know of. The only way rules come about is by people pushing the limits. It's true. Yep. Now, I'm sure I brought this up before. Uh, Jason, do you cut your hair once a week? <laughs> <laughs> once a month, probably. All right. And the reason yeah. I ask is Lane, how often do you cut your hair? Cause every, you two, every two weeks, every two weeks. All right. In fact, I was planning to go today and I sat down at the computer real quick and went, Oh crap. And went and ran and grabbed my laptop. <laughs> and here I am. Yeah. <laughs> and nice. so is that a military cut? And if so, does, is there a name for it? Like the crew cut? It's basically a high and tight, except I tell them to leave the top a little bit longer so I can actually comb it. It gives me something to do in the morning. And speaking of names of weird stuff, I uh, was looking at my hat here. Now, this is if the front part kind of takes it away, but 
This hat crease is almost a West Texas punch. Huh. Speaking of a high tight and a crew cut, this uh, is a modified West, 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 West Texas crunch. Hey, Jason, when you go in and get your haircut this time, get a flat or not a flat top. Just get a high and tight. Oh, you well, you think I go in to get my haircut. I do this myself. Okay, well then get a high and tight. I'll I what is that? Just more tight? All you all you do more. skin straight up the sides. Yeah. Yep. And just I don't think my wife would be happy with that. Oh, why not? She likes your fuzzy little head the way it is, right? Maybe yeah, she would love it. Longer. Yeah, look grow it longer then. How about you grow a mustache? Well, no. I just yeah, I big, like clean a big porn big porn stash. <laughs> <laughs> you can be yeah. like uh, Dr. Steele and, and comb it with a comb while he talks to you. I would probably look a whole lot more distinguished with a, a full beard and stash, but yeah. Why don't you try beard for the winter? Mm, you I might look like winter. you made it to 25 years old. <laughs> How old you are you guys? Now, Jason? Jason's 18 now. Oh Eight. boy. Almost can drink. Well, my 30. wife turned 39 yesterday. We're about to be 40 next year. Y'all. Uh, well, bad news. <laughs> After 42, everything starts yeah, breaking. It doesn't get any better, does it? No. I can guarantee that. Uh, I just had a birthday a couple weeks ago. And then my kid had a birthday, and then my other kid had a birthday. Nice. I got a birthday in November. Bunch of nice. fun birthdays. I think I'm going to ask for a grill for the new back porch. I asked for the lottery numbers for the next drawing. 900 and some odd million dollars. Phew. It'll yeah. ruin you. Lottery winners always, their lives always fall apart. I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah. <Soon your> <laughs> enjoy I'll, 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 be, I'll be ruined and have a different old muscle car and hot rod to drive every day of the month. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lane, I'm working an angle to get my truck and it's going, I'm not going to say it out loud, Jason, but I haven't uh, heard back. So maybe uh, that might not happen, but I, I'm working a new angle on a truck. So we'll see what happens. Ah. Uh, Nice. It's, well, it's, I'm interested. Yeah, it's quite a stretch. I uh, I stock trucks now. I find one that I think is the best, and I stock it till it sells. Then I find the next one. I mm. watch it on a daily nice. basis. Hey, there's a guy. You know, in the life's, too, life's, yeah. life's too short to drive boring vehicles. If yeah. you got to drive somewhere, at least enjoy it. Every time I see someone die on the internet, that's a friend of mine. I think, oh, I should go buy my truck. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they didn't think they'd be dead tomorrow. I guarantee it. I guarantee those people thought they had years to go and then boom, it's over. Are you, you just wait till I die and the auction here at my place after I'm dead is going to be great. <laughs> oh my gosh. My wife will be loaded. <laughs> Maybe she'll sell it for pennies on the dollar. I, ho I hope she doesn't sell everything for what I told her I paid for it. Yes, right. Yeah, oh, hey, boy. <laughs> I just wanted to bring up the this live user's name, Chigwick. Chigwin, Chigwinden, Chigwinden, Chigwinden. I've never heard that name before in my life, David. David Chigwinden. That's pretty good. And so uh, Scott well, Scott Hartwell says, car people call you a heim. What's a heim? Is that a bad word? People call who a heim? Me? I don't know. Maybe he was I, talking about. I don't know. Well, that sounds German. Or it's actually a, a joint, actually, on my hot rod over there, a Heim joint in my four link. Have we talked about the XFC version two coming out? Did we do that last week, Jason? I think we did that last week. Probably, yep. Yeah. Well, which so show are you how... going to, Jason? Mm -hmm. Yeah, which show I'll are you going to? Punk and Chunk. Oh, that would be so much fun. Yeah, it is. Man. And it's only like three hours away for you, right? No, it's like six. Oh, God. Yeah. That's a hike. When, what's the no. last show you went to, Jim? It's no South Dakota. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I just went to the greatest show of the year, Nashboro, 15th right. year anniversary, and tons of people. I don't know. I'm sure I said this, but I got there on Thursday morning. Oh, I got there before that, but Thursday morning I drove in, and there were so many, there were as many tents there on Thursday as you usually see on a Saturday. I'm going to try to make it there next year. Well, that, I think you should. That would be awesome if you did. Yeah, I'll have the strangest 3D airplane that I can design. Just don't yeah. schedule it at the same time as not in the fall, Jimmy. It's not me. My, my dates are never going to change. They've been the same for 15 years. Yeah, not all scheduled on top of you. 
Yeah. And that was like eight years into my event. So uh, <laughs> I probably will never make it to Nall in the fall. Also, I'm changing the name of that event. I'm never going to call it the right name. What are you going to call it? Nall in the fall or oh. fall Nall. That's it. Fall Nall. Not Nall. Just call Basically. it Nall. Or going to Nall. Nall. Just call it a long ways away from Lane. Maybe there's a reason they put it there. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I should have thought that through. <laughs> oh, well. Well, guys. Jason's getting ready to leave. He wants to get out of here. Start packing, I guess. You got to cut his hair. Which one? Undo his artwork. You're going to look at that artwork before he leaves? You're going to leave it in there? Yeah, those are the frames. Oh, okay. At least he's got his name on his shirt, so he knows who he is. Sit me down now, y'all. Damn it, Jason. Why do you wear your shirt? Oh yeah, it's that it's packed actually. I'm taking her, it with me. My girl. Okay. <laughs> did, you just, did you just say her my girl? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my daughter's name is Maeve. We call her Merv. And then sometimes we'll say, Er my good Merv. <laughs> uh will you tell Miss Christy that we all appreciate her and uh want to wish her a happy weekend? I certainly will. Christy. They all appreciate you and want to wish you a happy weekend. <laughs> they all appreciate you and want to wish you a happy weekend. Can't we see something fly across the screen and hit Lane in the face. Yeah, hey, come here. <laughs> Show them what you're doing. Twing. Show them what you're doing. What do you got here? Speak loudly. <laughs> I know what. Eighth inch balsa. Eighth inch balsa. And what are you doing with it? I'm making sheet six. Sheet six? <laughs> <laughs> She's making sheet six out of eighth inch balsa. Nice. Oh, we got I knew she was going to hit you with that thing. I think she can karate chop it. Yeah, she hit me. <laughs> evil. Evil. Oh, wow. uh, you know what next Thursday is, Jason? Oh. Um, RDR2 drops, my friend. What is it? Red Redemption oh, 2. Oh, Red Dead 2. Greatest game in the century. It's eight years in the making. I know you're excited. I am. you damn right. Well, Lane. I haven't have a played great... a video game in a long time. Well, I, and there's a good reason not to. But I don't have that kind of time in my life. Yeah, it's a late night activity for me. Late night, I'm still out here in this shop most of the time. That's because you have nine cars. Uh, twenty something cars now. <laughs> I did get the Cadillac out and I washed it and cleaned out the interior, immaculate. Took it out and uh, then it started raining. So awesome. I drove the 63 up to uh, Aberdeen oh, a few weeks ago, the convertible. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, <clears throat> I normally drive the 69 pickup, but and now I'll be driving that 72 Dodge until spring. Then I'll be driving that 70 Challenger. I might just rotate. Everybody's all freaked out because I haven't driven the same thing twice yet. So all right. That's because you're living the dream, man. I don't know about that, but I'm living. <laughs> I should go back in time and become a heli pilot in the dusty wars and then come back in and uh, save people's lives and be an American badass. Just like you like, then, then you could be super cool, but you'd mm -hmm. have to cut your hair though. If you're in the military, I, I do. I do. Right. Yeah. Hey, nope. <laughs> well, I want to thank our podcast sponsor, hobby King and hobby King.com. Go check them out. Uh, I'm not kidding. They have new stuff coming out every day. I saw a battery review come out. I almost did a story on it, but I realized it was a review on some older batteries. So I did. Um, Jason's going to be gone. And uh, Lane, what are you doing this weekend? This weekend, I'm going to spend Friday at State Cross Country, Saturday afternoon watching the Husker football game. And Sunday, I'll be staining my father in law's deck and doing multiple other things for him. Damn. You are <sighs> Yeah, that is in between building airplanes, cutting airplanes, boxing airplanes, getting the trailer ready, working on that car for myself, working on that car for my son, getting wheels and tires put on that truck. It's just, yeah. Wow. Yeah, so a light weekend. I, I should be I done. A list. I'll have most of it done by Monday. Oh, no, the list. That doesn't include the list. She's got the list over there. <laughs> you don't want to see the list. Uh, I'm, I'm busy. I might get a drink of beer today at some point. Well, I do have a dream of actually getting a fire going in the fire pit, you know, very high in the air. And uh, have we seen a picture of this? Does anyone care? Does anyone yeah. want to see what I've been working on? Your deck looks great, man. I saw it on, on Facebook. Because well, if it's not on it. Facebook, it didn't happen. I don't know if you knew that. Facebook is an evaporative uh, internet source and everything you post there is like spitting in the wind. Cause as soon as it leaves your mouth, it disappears. That's all I'm yeah. saying. 
but it didn't happen if it's not on Facebook. <laughs> well, I'm sure. Okay, let me get there. Present to everybody. Like the red wall. Okay, so let's, first of all, the old concrete, which is 35 years old, ended at the swimming pool. And this year I walked up to it and I said, and my wife walked up behind me. I said, I'm not cleaning this pool anymore. Let's rip this damn thing out. And we did like five days later, it was gone. And then we called up this other, I was driving down the road and there was a guy working on some stone and I pulled over and I said, will you come to my house for real? And he did. <laughs> and I said, here's how much money I have. And here's what I want you to do. So he fixed all the eaves, fascia and gutters of my house, repainted the house and did that. Dang. I, Jason, I can't even begin to say the deal I got, but then he put the second pad of concrete in and then they stained it and they didn't tell me the other pad wouldn't match. So that's why I have two different colors. I was pretty upset. I got to say, but then I spray painted all the furniture. I painted that wall. And then that fire pit that you see the smoke coming out of is actually about three feet into the ground. And it's uh, got a metal liner with lava rocks on the bottom and sides. And so I got to test her out and then we have to sit around it. And yeah. Drink it. So who are the two guys that you said you'd like to have them do a live show? I didn't recognize the names. You don't know Walt Wilkins? I don't think so. Oh, well, be sure Walt, when I had a record label, Walt was the main guy on my label. Also, we, he was, uh, we were at Baylor. He was actually my film instructor at Baylor university. Then Kevin Welch is a uh, pretty big. He just had a song called millionaire come out by hold on. Angela. Chris Stapleton just came, uh, cut millionaire. And so my wife and I worked with Kevin on a lot of his music. And then Kevin was also on my record label. And then these guys were also my best friends, but now they live in Texas. I never see them. So if it gives you an idea why I didn't know them, for yeah. example, that truck sitting out there, the yellow one that I showed you yeah, is factory radio delete. Oh. There, there is no radio and never was a radio. You and just there, won't be, there won't be a radio. Well, if you spend enough time in my head, you'll realize that I don't need radio when I'm right, driving. Yeah. Sometimes I find it's good to stop the voices in your head. No, nah, they speak French. So I got to learn French so I can understand what they're saying. Jason, if you got a jet, please do so. I don't want to hold you up. All right. I'll peace out and I'll talk to you next week about the event. All right, man. Have fun. Yeah. You got a double salute, Jason. Whoop, whoop. That's right. Let me turn this off. Now that, that the back deck looks, looks good, man. Thank you. I'm excited. Um, what else? There's more to be done, but that, you know, I knew as soon as we did it, it was going to lead to extended uh, purchases of, of um, pressure washers and uh, two cases of spray paint and all this other stuff. And so, but and a, ke uh, a kegerator click on that Walt Wilkins link and go listen to Walt. He oh. is a Texas troubadour deluxe. He is a real deal. And really he's a artist and, and uh, music just happens to be his craft. That's cool. I think what you need to do where that concrete changes color like that between your mm -hmm. old and your new, yeah. just build yourself a, uh, either brick or concrete, uh, outdoor bar. And that way that gives you that separation. I was looking at that. I also asked him to give me a quote on putting a roof or not a roof, but kind of a covered area there. And then we would cover it out to the new concrete. So you can kind of have a covered old concrete and then it would jet out and that would make it look okay too. Right. Is it a roof or a roof? I would call it a roof. Is it a crick or a creek? I call it a creek. Is okay. it pecan or pecan? Uh, I don't know what I say. I call it a pecan. pecan. I think they're pecan. Pecan pie. Yeah, pecan pie. And I don't like pecans, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's irrelevant. They make my mouth itch. I like them. But they make <laughs> them. So you're like, ah, ah, <laughs> like this. It's terrible. Right. that would not be fun. Um, so I need to figure something out, Jim, and maybe you can help with this. I've got a 24 foot wingspan airplane sitting right there. You remember uh -huh. that one, right? All right. And it weighs like 250 pounds and I got to make it fly at least once okay. on elect on electric. Okay. I have a solution right in front of me. Hold on. This is dangerous what I'm about to do, but I will share my screen while I do it. I'm going to tell you where to go. Let's yeah, everybody sure. tells me where to go. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go to the profilebrotherhood.com. Yeah. Who knows what will be on this page? Well, I can Are tell you, you okay? Dag, he, I think he would have a power system that would do it. Altitude hobbies. Yeah. 
Those are great I, guys. I love altitude. I believe that's Garrett over there. And I was just looking at this, but um, I got money that they have the motor in the ESC that you need. I don't know. So, uh, let's see. 80 and then. Uh, but as soon as I fly that thing once, I don't care how the flight ends. You know, as long as the thing gets in the air, flies a pattern and lands, I'm good. Then I can hang it up in the ceiling and never mess with it again. Well, but you know, got to make it fly. You might want to call over there and tell them what it's going on. That sure. might make them like you more. <laughs> and then well, uh, maybe, maybe you need to fly it at an event. Well, that was the intent was we built it in seven days out there at Seth. And that was the intent oh. was to, to fly it there. Okay. Sorry. I didn't get that. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's the big one. I was there. You remember I was in the golf cart wanting to haul it down the runway and Seth was more than over. Yeah. I think we should have too. just towed it with a vehicle and yeah. you know, it would have worked. Who would but, have a motor like now? I know Axie makes big motors like that, but Axie, I don't think they have anything that big. Uh, Hacker has one that's that big, but boy, look at the price. Uh, I would think that I need to turn about a 42 to a 48 inch propeller. Uh, and 12S is generally about as big as you can go. Maybe you need two motors on it. Well, if I can't find one big enough, I think two, uh, what is it? 160, 160 or 150 CC, you know, kind of, or 100 what, CC. What size propeller? I want to turn about a 40, 42 to 48 inch. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, there's nothing here that's going to work. No, I had a, we had two castle helicopter motors with belt drive turning a single shaft and we had a 32 by, I don't know, 32 by 12 or something like that on there. And at full throttle, it would barely move that airplane. So we got to go up to, I'll probably use a propeller like what Mac Hodges has on his ultralights. The props are about 250 bucks. Uh, and I think 48 inches is kind of oh, the normal. God. Steve, I, I was looking at that 80 millimeter and it says 18 by eight, 18 by 10. So we're not even I'd halfway take, there. Take like six of those. Right. Which would be awesome, but that'd be a lot of battery. Well, yeah. And the not other thing I thought, the battery. Holy cow. right. No kidding. Uh, Pulse has, uh, some 12 S 22 thousands. So I could get those, uh, Pulse makes great batteries, but why go I, electric? Why not just put something gas powered on there? Because that was not the intent. Uh, cause it was at Seth. The initial intent was to make this thing electric and, and there's, uh, like I've said, there's nothing I can't do. There's things that I can't afford to do, but, <laughs> but we can do this. And I said, well, you know what? I'll get one of these motors. I think hobby King has a big hundred CC electric. I said, I can get one of them and try that. If that won't move it, then I'll put two of them side by side, like a cry cry or Cree Cree, however you say that, <laughs> right? Put two of them on there. And if that's not enough, then I'll put a third one down on the bottom. And eventually I'll have enough power to move that thing and get it up in the air. It's got a stall speed of like 12 miles an hour. Yeah. Maybe we could put a, just some sort of rocket on the end to get it in the air. <laughs> That'd be a big rocket. <laughs> You'd have to have like five <laughs> units of thrust. <laughs> and anyway. I could put a big gas motor on it. Heck I could put a five horse Briggs on it. If it's got, I mean, it can handle it. It just, that defeats the purpose. I watched you guys working on that the whole show. And I used to do this. I used to go to events, bring three airplanes and then work and work and work. And then the show was over. And one day I was like, why am I driving myself nuts like this? Well, that's the only time I get to work on airplanes. At, right. Gotcha. Uh, in fact, if I'm here at the shop or at the house, I'm usually working on stuff for the business or working on stuff, you know, around here. But so what I'll do is I'll go to do an event four days early. And then I can work on the airplanes yeah. that I want to fly. Right. Uh, and then fly them. Yeah. So that's how, that's how I do things. Well, everybody, my new green blue screen, I actually downloaded the app uh, during the podcast, which is not the greatest idea ever, but I can't load the app until I restart. So maybe next week I can have a uh, different uh, RC venues behind me. That would be pretty cool. You, you have a blue screen, like green yeah, right, screen? right here. Yeah. You flip it over and it's green. Interesting. So you can do funny stuff. Uh, that was the goal for today, but I was, uh, what was I doing? I don't know, but, um, yes. So hopefully I can do some funny stuff. Well, that'll be kind of cool. Well, the only thing I got is, Hey guys, take a look at lanes, planes, Facebook page. That's L A I N E S. Get one of my kudos that I just finished because I need, I don't want to have to drag them with cause there's a chance I could damage them. I'll ship it to you.
I'll hook you up. But I think I've got a 150, 160 mile an hour power system for these things now. That wow, is just, that's fast. Oh, it's great. Uh, there's a video on top of my Facebook page doing 150 plus down at Texas last year or earlier this year. I'd so, like to see that in FPV. I know anything over a hundred in the goggles is just like crazy. I'll put a camera on it. I don't mind. Take just drill one little hole in it and you got a camera in there. Right. Yeah. I know it's easy now. Anything. Yep. I got a couple of cameras, but I was messing with my inductrix today. Those things are fun. Little inductrix FPV. Yep. I got like one them. in the back. Yeah. You can fly them under the cars while you're in here. Well, I want to thank all the all the live folks out there for joining us. Lane, I appreciate you taking time. I know you got 8,000 things to do. <laughs> As always. They'll still be here tomorrow. Luckily, you got Christy over there working. So I know. And she's doing a good job. Good job, honey. Not a total loss. <laughs> right? Good job. All right, everybody. You've been talking to Lane, Jason, who's not on the road, but getting there, and Jim T. Graham of the RC Group's Hangout slash podcast. And uh, you guys have a great weekend. Who knows what's going to happen between now and then? I haven't even mentioned the weather's changing, so it's getting nice and cool. And uh, in true helicopter form, Lane is spinning around. I'm going to hit the stop button. We'll talk to y'all later. Bonk, bonk, See ya. Bonk, 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 bon